Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Welcome, this is Encourager Pastor. What a joy to have you, ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, leaders at the five-fold ministry level and all manner of level. God bless you. We are trusting God you'll be blessed, you'll be edified, you'll be built up, you'll be challenged. Maybe a revelation will come into your heart and mind and maybe some practical wisdom that we share will help you as a pastor or as a church leader to take your ministry to another level. Glory to God. And so, like we always do, before I introduce the guest we got tonight, uh, go ahead and share the link with the pastor's fellowship, a church group, you know, whatever they are ministers at any level, they will be blessed. And those uh, of you that are in other nations of the world, wherever you're watching this, always remember to send us a comment. Let us know how this is impacting the body of Christ and particularly the leadership. My name is Apostle David Juma. Your host is a great joy. We are blessed. Tonight we have Pastor Tom Ochori with me. He's back last week. We had a very beautiful subject, building a culture for growth. Yeah. And today we're going to do part two. Exactly. Awesome. But because, you know, some somebody may never have watched part one. So they need to know who is that uh, African man who is like Kush. Go ahead and introduce yourself <laughs> and, and, and where you minister from and yeah. what you're doing here. Yeah, um, my name is Pastor Tom Ocholi. I pastor a church called Believers Walk of Faith Church. Uh, like I said last week, those of you who are familiar with Nairobi, uh, we are located on the eastern part of the city. Uh, it's known as Eastlands, uh, precisely in uh, Embakasi, Tasia. Right. Uh, that's where we've been. That's where the church is. Uh, but if you ask for Believers Walk of Faith Church, many people may not... Uh, connect to that. So if you happen to be there, just say only believe and uh, you'll have arrived. Awesome. Yes. This is the only believe man. <laughs> this man only believes. You know, somebody else yeah. called me. I was calling another man of God in Tanzania and because uh, we're preparing some conference there. And then in his WhatsApp, the words written there is only believe. Mm. I told him, I stopped what I was telling him, I began telling him about you. Wow. I said, I have another man of God uh, here in the city. He's also an only believe kind of man. <laughs> and of course, I was telling him he should remember to, uh, he's been traveling and coming to minister with us. Yes. I told him, next time you come, I know where you're going to preach. Yes. You, I will take you to the only belief in Kenya. The, the original only belief. <laughs> the original only belief. And All so right. what a joy. We're going to have a beautiful, beautiful moment together. Last week, Pastor Tom, mm. we shared about um, building a culture that is conducive for growth. Mm. Every man of God, woman of God yeah. would want yeah. to see their ministry grow. Exactly. But the way life is in that house, it could deter the growth. Just very quickly as we go through what we shared last week briefly, first of all, define you know, this culture we're talking about, you know, give a gist of what the whole subject is all about. Okay. Uh, well, before I say that, I, uh, let me say that it's always a blessing to be here. Yeah, on Lelevi TV. Yeah, yeah it's always an honor yeah. uh, to be here. Thank you for uh, having me again this yes. week. Yes. Uh, I'm honored I'm, and I'm blessed. You're welcome. And uh, I trust that uh, whatever we're going to share with our fellow pastors today shall be edifying. Somebody will learn something. Somebody will be built up. And somebody will be encouraged because we are here to encourage a pastor. And today we have a table for them. So God has prepared a table for them <laughs> right here. All right. Awesome. All right. So, uh, like I said culture. last week, culture. Basically, without getting into deep definitions of what culture is, mm. uh, it's just a way of saying this is how we do things here. This is how, how we, we do, do things, things here. here. I like that. And it doesn't matter whether we are doing things here the right way or the wrong, or the wrong way. way because culture can be positive or negative mm. and so once it's been established uh, that's the way it's the norm is accepted within 
uh, that group of people, they, mm. they, that's the way they do things. Yeah. And so you may find it odd, or you may find it attractive, right. but culture is simply the way we do things here. If things are happening and what they do is they are doing good things, mm -hmm. then God will move, the Holy Spirit will move. But we also say, therefore, some of the things like um, bad culture, yeah. too much gossip, dishonor, um, disloyalty, disloyalty. Um, uh, lack of uh, submission to authority. Yeah. Non commitment. Non commitment. A church with a people that are not very committed, you know, they come when they want to come. Yeah. And a very hot potato in Africa, something we always have in excess men of God and women of God. We can export it. Uh, that <laughs> commodity that we have here in Africa is amazing. I'm telling you, if you guys in America, Canada, and other parts of Africa and Europe, if only you knew what we have here in excess. You, it will change your nations. Uh, you're already laughing. It's got time. Because I know what you want. <laughs> it's got time. You know, you know, because there was this idea that you call for a meeting for Christians in Africa at 9 a.m., they come at 10. No, 10 is actually, uh, I thought you said they come at noon. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a real, real problem. And so the way we do things here yeah. is a culture of yeah. not keeping time. Of course, not everywhere. I mean, here on this show yeah. and in our ministry, I know your ministry because I've been there come, you know, since inception. Yeah. I know you guys keep time. And here in the Apostolic House, we still do, little, do our best to keep time. Yeah, it's just a general, the general feeling, you know. Right. Among as many people, take for example, even our weddings. <laughs> so the card will clearly say attend. Yeah. And then uh, you, people will say, ah, I know it can't start at 10. Actually, people, will, people will actually say that. So people get late for no good reason. They just say, I know, I know it won't start at 10. Yeah. So I'll be there at, at noon or 12.30. Or I'll go in the afternoon. <laughs> Weddings in Africa, I'm telling you, 90%. I'm sure they don't start in time. And if you uh, can so remember I'll... yours, did it start on time? First of all, the transportation I had did not show up, so we couldn't even start in time. So, I'm telling you. <laughs> and you and I are always uh, conducting weddings. I hope you conduct them on time. <laughs> no, I'm always, uh, let me tell you one time, I really, I had to leave the venue and go for lunch. Hey. And tell those people, when those people show up, <laughs> call you know. me. Because I was there from 10, and by 1, they had not shown up. And I started getting hungry, not angry. <laughs> <laughs> so I had actually to go for lunch and tell them when they show up, yeah. let me know. So last week, uh, viewers, we talked <clears throat> about, you know, culture that exists in the church, that yeah. the pastors and leaders are just allowing to continue to flow. No timekeeping, disloyalty, yeah. dishonor. dishonor you know, lack of commitment. commitment. And these are very, very, very difficult things, yet we see them yeah. as it were. And so um, what we are saying is you can, as a man and woman of God, as a leader in the church, build yeah. a proper culture mm -hmm. that will bring growth to mm -hmm. the church. And growth mm -hmm. is not, not only numerical, yeah. but it is healthy yeah. growth. And so we are here with a man of God, Pastor Tom Oshori, so we're going to open up this space. Yeah. And uh, probably share a little bit more on you know different types of culture if you like you know uh before we begin now today to show how we can build a proper good culture yeah uh i think uh you may, may have made this observation and i mentioned it last week if you do your own uh, study you'll discover that uh, growing churches healthy churches thriving churches more or less basically have the same kind of a culture. Mm -hmm. It cuts across the board. Uh, whether those churches are in Kenya, even you go across the, mm -hmm. the nation, you'll find basically that churches that are thriving, impactful, have certain standards and certain basic uh, uh, similarities. Mm -hmm. And that's why they grow. Mm -hmm. uh, on the flip side, 
churches that are stuck eh? <laughs> <laughs> non growing churches yeah. uh, you find this church someone will tell you no i've been in this church i grew up in this church uh, i got married in this church uh, and all those years that church ha doesn't has not registered any significant growth or impact within that society but when you go deep you find that there are certain cultures uh, and ingrained in the minds of certain people that are actually working against the growth of that of that church and so what you're talking about is very important to me because a man of God could be praying uh, fasting you know teaching the word doing all that they need to do and the dilemma is then why is it growing? Why am I not registering any significant change or growth? Because there could be in some things going on inside the church yeah. that actually uh, are reducing on whatever gains they are making. Yeah. And those things we have mentioned. And so one of the things about, because uh, you've just mentioned that, about um, healthy culture within a church mm. is, a ch is, a, is a culture where um, honor is a big thing. Yeah, honor is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. You honor your pastors. I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah. do believers they are honor their leaders? Yeah. How do they treat their leaders? Yeah. And because if they don't treat their leaders well and honor them, then even when the leaders are praying over them, it doesn't sink in. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and and the Bible also talks about giving honor to whom honor is due. Mm -hmm is due is more or less like you you are really an obligation to to honor that person yeah. it's required of you mm -hmm. so when someone says that is due it means that it has to be it has to be uh done or, mm -hmm. or there is something that so honor is something which really affects the reception so if uh people don't honor their leaders mm -hmm. uh, then those leaders will not really impact them yeah because uh, I don't see how you can really tear down your pastor on Saturday night and receive from him on, on Sunday morning. Many of the people, because we have a generation now that is on social media, mm -hmm. they say, well, um, the pastor is not honorable um, because it's a two-way traffic. You know, if you need respect, you must be respectful. And so there are a few people that have been very strange voices tearing down pastors and actually becoming kind of their discipline masters which is completely interesting what is your comment on this yeah first i think that is uh, out of order but before i say that i agree to an extent that um, it is uh, incumbent upon the pastors also to demonstrate honor and trust mm. to the people that they are leading and uh but then you remember the the, the bible says that um uh, that uh, paraphrased eh? uh, we are never in a place really to judge another man's servant mm -hmm. uh, in the eyes of his master he is either standing or falling or he's either falling mm -hmm. this is where i see the challenge <clears throat> you cannot wholly understand uh the actions of your pastor from merely uh, looking at what they do. And I'll explain this in this way. Mm -hmm. That there are things even recorded in the Bible, we can look at some examples, where outwardly it looked like that person was off. But what is off in the eyes of a member may be very right in the eyes of God, where that man is concerned. Mm -hmm. And so this person that takes it upon themselves to dishonor their pastor or their leaders because they did not understand their action. You know, I don't know if it's making sense. It's making sense because there was Elijah and the widow. <laughs> you make the cake for me now, first. Think about, can you imagine if that happened in Kenya now to be breaking news? <laughs> That would limit it. That's why I said there are a few examples. Yeah. That would be breaking news. How can a man of God eat food he from calls, a widow woman calls instead him, of going there? He to... calls himself a man of God. Mm -hmm. A greedy preacher, mm -hmm. not gluttonous. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus, leave alone even Elijah, Jesus himself, 
you know what he did? He took a little boy's lunch mm -hmm. in John chapter 5. <laughs> he was told, there's a boy here. That's what they told him. There's a young boy here with a packed lunch. For, packed lunch. For you break. know what Jesus said? Mm -hmm. He said, bring them to me. It, like he took the boy's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And let me tell you, this thing, culture of dishonor, is because that's, that's a very thin line, mm -hmm. Apostle. Yeah. Very thin line. We need to be careful with that because it's because of those kind of things that people have now taken it upon themselves to discipline the pastor, they think, or the leaders, they are errant. Mm -hmm. That's just what you're talking about. What would someone think? Jesus took the little boy's lunch. This widow is a widow. She's even told the man. Uh, this is the last meal. On and, the the, and the man still said, make for me first. Mm -hmm. What would you make of that? This, this must, this, these people are heartless. And that's why some people get to social media, jump on such, such kind of things and feel, uh, let's discipline these people. Mm -hmm. And it's created a culture of dishonor because <clears throat> you may see what is in a man's hands, but you can't tell what is in his heart. Yeah. You can't tell what is in his heart. I'll give you, let, let me give you another example that even to me, I would have had an issue with it. John chapter 9, I know you know the, the story. This man comes to Jesus, he's a blind man, and, and, and he wants to see. And Jesus spits on the ground. Now picture it, because it happened. Mm -hmm. He is spat on the ground. Not even water. Spit. <laughs> then he mixed that. And then he applied on the eyes of these people. And the people are watching. And then Jesus said, he told him, with that muddy face, mm. now go wash yourself. Wow. That would have been in the newspaper tomorrow. And then people now feel they are justified. Yeah. We are the ones to discipline this man. But all these scenarios we are saying, mm -hmm. what was God's perspective? All this thing, God knew Jesus is obedient. Yeah. No? The Bible says he only did that which he saw his father do, and only spoke that which he heard. So now, it is clear, Pastor Tom, that indeed, like we said last week of yours, you need to look, throw eyes into your congregation. Try to identify what culture there is right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that then you can shift. And we said last week, and maybe we could say that again, uh, the need for teaching. Because failure to teach has created a certain culture. Whereas good teaching is also created yeah. a certain culture. So culture is either taught or caught. Mm. And it can be taught consciously. So, uh, and I hope that after this, there's a pastor who will take it upon themselves to begin to correct some things. Mm. Uh, maybe by starting to address them, teach them, mm. because this program is creating an awareness. Yeah. Even to me, yeah. I'm also asking myself, so what culture do we have? Uh, is it a good culture? Or is it a bad culture? And what do I need to do? And I think that's happening to mm. anybody else listening. Mm. So, it's either taught or caught. Mm. The pastor who is aware of the need to develop, create the right culture for growth, will be deliberate in teaching. Yeah. Now, there's also something that's, as that happens. There are pastors who may not even be aware. Mm. There are pastors who are learning now that, oh, so there is a culture. Yeah. The fact that they have not been aware doesn't mean there is no culture. Yeah. In the ignorance, a culture has been created, mm. no? Uh, either by, it, it's called default, eh? yeah, yeah, by it, default. Yeah, it's just happened. Mm. There, is, there is a scripture I want us to read, mm -hmm. and then I will go to what you just said in Acts chapter 6 and verse 14. And you know, that was just in my mind. I was just about to take you there and ask you, because I saw a lot of murmuring there. <laughs> and 
the, there's some churches. Th as this man of God is looking for this verse. Yes. <laughs> a lot of churches that are murmuring. Many people complaining all the time. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Never satisfied with the songs. The songs are too short, oh, too yeah. long, yeah. too loud, music yeah. too loud. Yeah. You know. Uh, Pastor is sweating too much. Message too long. Yeah. Pastor is sweating too much. Yeah. You know, and so forth. Yeah, so in Acts chapter 6 and verse 14, it says, For we heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth, they were talking about Philip, uh, Stephen, where they stoned him. Mm -hmm. So they are saying, we heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place. Of course, that's a lie. Eh? Yeah. When people want to stone you, they'll... <laughs> <laughs> that's, also... reason for... <laughs> that's a program for another day. Yeah. <laughs> when they shall want to stone you. Yes. <laughs> so he said, he shall destroy this place. And listen, the, the latter part of this scripture, it says, and shall change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Yeah. So Moses, NIV actually says, handed down to us. Mm. Passed down. So Moses had passed down some customs to the children of Israel. You know, man of worship and all those things. He passed down. Now, this is the angle that I want to bring to this. Okay. And this could be historical. So we may need a truth and a justice commission. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, man of God, I don't know your experience, mm -hmm. but there could be many pastors who are operating and perpetuating certain traditions because that's what was handed to them. Yeah, that's quite sensitive. Yeah, uh, yeah that's they why found I found it. That's why. Done, that's yes. why I'm saying you need a truth. Uh, Don't worry about the truth and justice commission. We just need the apostolic reformation. You know, those who look at the traditions in the church, but they are not biblical. But they were handed down to them by those who so created them. There are certain things I am doing as a pastor allowing as a pastor just because that's what i saw my fathers do and we've never challenged them to investigate and check and say is this scriptural exactly so so that's how maybe there's a pastor who's saying but that's what i used to see my pastor do that's how i saw him handle people that's how i saw him do ministry so to them it's the correct thing no? So that's, that's something also we need to ask ourselves. These things that we are doing, where did we get them from? And I like what you're saying, that everything should come back to yeah. the word. So Moses handed down some customs. And uh, I was thinking when I was coming for this uh, show, mm -hmm. And I will not give details like where or what, but I'll just, because it may relate to some people and they may be able to. But there was a time I served in a ministry as a key leader, key leader, mm -hmm. for some time. And man of God, I can tell you, I can never remember if we ever had a leaders meeting. Oh, okay. So, so here pastor would come on Sunday and preach. And you'd be to, he'd say, now, this, next Sunday, you lead the service and you do this. So the issue of teaching and creating, I, I don't even know what culture we had. I was never in a leader's meeting. Wow. So, man of God, when did you last yes. have a leader's meeting in your ministry? And the things that we are doing, because this is where we're beginning, mm. Where did we learn them from? Is it just things that have been passed on? Have we interrogated those things to see? Are they biblical? Yeah. You know? Like, I'll give you a very normal thing. Many people say that. <clears throat> Some people say that. Mm. I suffered. So you must suffer. That's right. <laughs> I pay the price, you have to pay the price. Yeah. Without knowing that actually it's God who measures out for you your type of suffering, your cup, can you please say that again? Because we are giving people jugs. <laughs> because I suffered, you suffered. No. 
But so, it, don't you agree that that's, that's, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a culture? Even, it's a culture. Whereas it's actually God who should determine what you go through. It's not because your leader suffers, he has to ensure that you also suffer so that it, it can be a lesson to you, like uh, some Swahili speakers will so say. So I used to park yeah. my car on the hill, downhill, so you have to park yours downhill. So that at the meeting <laughs> you can just have the, <laughs> the kick to start, otherwise the battery is not even working. Wow. So there's, there's, there, there are men who mishandle and mistreat some pastors. But you see, they're, they're not having an evil mind. That's really what we really need to make sure that. Yeah, they're not, not evil. No, in yeah. fact, to them, they're doing the right thing. They are trained. This is how I was trained to do ministry. So I am training you. Yeah. So they're also handing down. And you can imagine, <clears throat> if that's what he learned, then he hands it down to me. Then I also, that's how I'm going to train my people. You see now, that thing is not going to stop. It's a cycle that yeah. is not going to stop. Yeah. So that thing of what has been handed down. This is very loaded, man of God. And we're talking about building this culture. So there was a leadership meeting in that particular place. And there are all manner of stories from different places. Because we're going to a break. We're going to come back now to talk about real practical steps. We want to help a pastor to actually get back on the steering wheel yeah. of that ministry mm. and not only preach and pray yeah. and prophesy yeah. but actually also do certain things to build something that is going to grow that ministry as yeah. it were yeah yeah. Huh? yeah awesome so here we are this is encourage a pastor we are here talking with mm -hmm. pastor tomochori from the only belief yeah uh you know it should be only believe ministries to the body of christ or something like that I mean, I love this man, and I'm so grateful that we can absolutely share on things that are going to help you. So take a break. We're going to be back shortly and continue this discussion. It's going to be a blessing. Shalom. Knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is not just preparation for life. Education is life itself. Great education does not only deliver creative thinkers, problem solvers and innovative minds, but also individuals who are physically, emotionally and spiritually sound. Gospel Light College offers holistic education and much more. This course uh, or this bachelor degree has really uh, ca has come in at the right time when there's so much need in the community. My life has been transformed, my ministry has been impacted and I'm going out there not only to impact the community but to impact nations. Search no more. We offer higher diploma, bachelor's and a master's degree in biblical studies and community development. We also offer Greek classes. The May 2022 intake is ongoing. Book your slot today by calling 0748 Gospel Light College, a Christ-like worker for a Christ-like church. For growth for your church. And we're going to now look into some of the you know, practical things we can learn from the Word of God. And of course, the wisdom from the man of God. So before we went to break, you know, we were talking about things handed down by yeah. the elders and the previous generation. But yeah. now let's leave that matter and come into how do we actually build a culture yeah. for growth? Because there must be growth. Okay. Uh, to start us off, let me bring our attention to Acts chapter 2 mm -hmm. and verse 47 reason why we are reading Acts chapter 2 is because we are partnering our ministries and churches according to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, and these were, these people, the Spirit of God had already come. They had yeah. been filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. And so we are safe to follow their model. <laughs> <laughs> they are freshly filled with the Holy Ghost. They are freshly filled Not with the Holy days, Spirit, you know. You know? 
yeah. and so we 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 can we can trust their example yeah you know as new testament believers we can trust as pentecostals we have a certain model mm -hmm. it says in verse 47 mm -hmm. concerning the early church yeah acts 2 47 praising god and having favor with all the people mm -hmm. and the lord added to the church daily so the church grew so you're talking about building a culture that brings church growth and here i don't know if there is any church in our time i said i don't know because there could be many but i don't know uh of churches that are growing daily yeah there are some in uh, some parts of africa some parts of asia particularly people are getting saved you know every day is is going on and of course beyond what we can imagine yeah. but most urban centers and the general environment and observation is not necessarily added daily it's a daily transfer I put seller <laughs> pause and think you transfer them from this church to that church I thought they were, they were, they were, we are adding monthly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the scripture. So, <clears throat> daily. Yeah. So the question that we need to look at is what, what was their culture mm. that resulted in daily church growth? What, well, how did we get here? Let's hear. Okay. What do you have in mind? If we go to verse 41 and verse 42, mm -hmm. It says, verse 41, Then they that gladly received his word mm -hmm. were baptized, and the same day were added and about 3,000 souls. This is after Peter mm -hmm. spoke, Peter's message. Mm -hmm. right after Pentecost. Verse 42, Now those people, he said, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine right. and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread right. and prayers. You see a culture there. Mm. This is how they created the right spiritual environment and culture that resulted in verse 47, people getting added daily. Wow. So these four things, apostolic doctrine, fellowship, mm -hmm. breaking of bread, and in prayers. So prayer for reason must become a culture. Yeah. And, and, and this breaking of bread eh, is, um, it, 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 you know, there's something about swallowship. Yeah, you created just a new word right here on TV. Yeah. There's, swallowship. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's something about breaking bread, mm. uh, eating together. Uh, they just does something to fellowship. Mm. Uh, that's why even families should have a culture of eating together. Yeah. But you see, now we need to ask you ourselves, if I am going to have the right culture, what am I establishing as doctrine? Yeah, that's number one. Right. Because the culture won't produce itself. What's the doctrine? Because I know you a little bit. In the 90s, our generation had a saying, we don't want doctrine, we want the gospel. <laughs> So we even didn't understand the meaning of words. You know, we crafted a Swahili English word. We don't want mad doctrines. You know, these churches are just busy with mad doctrines. Yeah. You know, and keeping people down. But it was simply teaching. Yeah, teaching, exactly. What's a doctrine? Just a set of beliefs, you know, that is accepted within a certain group of people or whatever. And so we need to ask ourselves, uh, that which we are emphasizing and building and mm. on before the people that we minister to, does it, what is the effect of that? Mm. Is it something that is going to build a culture of oneness? Or, because there is a way, man of God, there is a way. A church can hold on to certain things that even you, you want to join them but you can't. <laughs> without getting into details yeah they can have certain strong beliefs that you want to join them but you're thinking by the time i am a member of this church mm -hmm. you know first from the attire you know <laughs> 
So that which they hold as their doctrines and set of beliefs and whatever can actually work against. Gotcha. And so doctrine. Number two, they had fellowship. Let me uh, not necessarily to throw some Spanner. spiritual tantrums, but pose and think that in Africa, congregations and churches that seem to have strange doctrine seem to have little grown, whereas those that seem to remain on the original <laughs> Christ word is just hurtful. Have you observed that? I yes, mean, yes. So what is this that is making these guys? I can say something to that. It's because of uh, who we are. Mm -hmm. Who we are, I'll explain. Mm -hmm. the, the tradition African man has a tendency towards uh, strange things. <laughs> <laughs> Mystical, spiritual. Spiritist, familiar. It, it, it's strange. Yeah. It attracts them. Just because of where we're coming from. So, uh, you're talking about doctrine. Yeah. So, if you want to preach about doctrine, and you craft a word like the mystery of the doctrine, yeah. they want to hear what is that mystery behind exactly. the doctrine, instead of just saying biblical teaching. Yeah. So, so people tend towards, you know, we, we, we're coming from, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, when I'm saying this, I'm like on the escarpment. You know, there you're driving in the same, then you see, you slide down there. Yeah. And, but you know, we've had in the recent past, in the recent times, people actually saying, uh, well, let's go back to our God. Amen. And that has been going on in Africa. Yeah, let, 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 let's, you know, this, this, this thing about um, a, God, a, a Jesus we don't know, and you know, some even think is is not. This is not. We had our own God. That's what I'm saying. It is a castle place where you can easily. So now, to answer you, so when people have a tendency, a natural leaning towards a certain side, when someone begins to bring something that looks contrary to the norm. Uh, the norm. Actually, they, they get a crowd. Eh? Yeah, they get a crowd. And uh, that's why if you just teach maybe on the Holy Spirit, you may not have enough <laughs> results as if you t taught on the Spirit. And say, on this Sunday, we'll, we'll have you drink the oil, which is like drinking the spirit. You know, the Bible says mm. that they drank of the same spirit. Mm. You know, it says in the yeah. book of Corinthians, they drank of the spirit. Mm. And so that's why some people are actually having people drink oil. Because they say oil is a symbol of the spirit. Mm. And, and let me tell you, man of God, you will actually have many people coming to drink the oil. Yeah, so... So we have that culture. So let's go back to the scripture because those things are very attractive. Yeah. But we are trying to say, Pastor, bring in apostolic doctrine, yeah. teaching. Yeah. So where, where, fellowship. where is the pastor going to get this teaching that is going to help him to establish the right culture? Because I think we said last time, most of Africa, they want to preach and not to teach. Yeah. We, we, we need to do what the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. We need to have our minds renewed. And because we've gotten here, mm -hmm. so let's deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have our minds renewed. Right. And the first thing a person needs to ask himself is what kind of a people do I want to raise? Mm -hmm. It must start there. Yeah. Because you can, you, you'll pro reproduce you after your kind. Mm. So the person needs to, that is listening needs to ask themselves, 
what kind of a people mm. do I want to raise? Right. So it must start there. Mm. And then there are three things that are very important. One of them we've mentioned, mm -hmm. but we can still... Yeah, go ahead. Three go ahead. things that are important. Mm -hmm. Establishing a right culture mm -hmm. will take three things. Yeah. Number one, culture doesn't create itself. So the pastor will have to commit himself to teach certain things, which yeah. we'll mention. Yeah. Certain, uh, there are about four things that mm -hmm. must be taught by every pastor. Mm -hmm. They must teach that. What are those four things? One, <clears throat> we've mentioned repeatedly, honor. Every pastor must teach on honor. Because it affects the way people receive. Number two, commitment. Commitment. Yeah. Those things need to be taught. Yeah. Commit, honor, and commitment. Why? We, we said last week, we run our churches based on people giving themselves, mm. you know, giving themselves. Mm. There's another very hot potato, it's almost getting burnt, mm -hmm. which uh, I don't want to say, but it's been circulating on social media, mm -hmm. uh, where people say certain people who are serving, uh, yeah. Like ashes need to be paid. Right. Everybody want to be paid something. It is a. It is almost. Is burn, it is almost it? burning. It's almost burning. Let's not go there. Yeah. Churches depend on volunteers. Mm. So if people there's a culture of, of uh, non-commitment, mm -hmm. then the vision definitely will drag. Yeah. So honor, uh, commitment. commitment. That is important. The third thing pastor must teach his people is people must learn how the importance of sacrifice mm. Sacri yep. sacrifice ought to be a culture people should be willing to sacrifice yeah. uh, to build a ministry will require people to sacrifice not just their resources they'll sacrifice time mm. There are people who are, are, are gifted and skilled. We are professionals in our churches. Uh, who, if they say, I'm going to charge the church for my services, the church will not be able to okay. afford. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they, they have an architect in the church. Mm -hmm. These people should be willing to sacrifice for this vision mm -hmm. to grow. So if a pastor is not teaching, sacrifice. Is key, and then the fourth. I say there are four: mm -hmm. so honor, commitment, uh, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Then number four, excellence. How do you do things? Yeah. So that we we, we present the ministry of Christ excellently. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so tonight, a pastor is listening to us, and you've been struggling the whole day. You don't know what to preach tomorrow. Guess what? <laughs> Your four messages: honor, commitment, commitment sacrifice. sacrifice Excellent. But anyway, there were three things, and you say the first one, yeah. and then this first one produced the four. Yes. So we go to the second <laughs> one. <laughs> this is the, that, that's to answer the question like, yeah. if a pastor is saying, so how do I, what do I teach? Mm. Start teaching on right. honor. Yeah. Start teaching on commitment. Mm. Start teaching on sacrifice. Start teaching on excellence. Mm. Because people like excellence. Mm. It attracts the Bible says Daniel was preferred because he, was, he had an excellent spirit. He, he, people are preferred. So the second thing is building a culture will not be a walk in the park. <laughs> you got to burn your fingers. Yeah. You will have to invest time. And the key word here is people will have to be retrained. It won't be a walk in the park. And so if someone says, I'm going to do this for a month, and then they're not seeing any visible results, they say, ah, whatever Apostle David and Pastor Tom were saying, this thing doesn't work. Yeah. I've tried it for a month. No, this is a lifelong process. So right. that someone really needs to commit himself, mm. no? There'll be trainings and retrainings and refresher trainings, and you, they have to invest their time. And at times we invest resources. It's not a walk in the park. It's one not, pastor it's say, not a walk in the park. One pastor, actually, as a bishop, say, if 
He was doing follow-up for a new believer. Six months. And after six months, the believer says, uh, Bishop, um, I actually do not understand what has been going on. I think me, I've never been saved. <laughs> and so, he, so he's kind of telling the bishop, uh, six months has been wasted. Uh, so I, I, I didn't understand what it was all about. Did you say I got saved? <laughs> <laughs> after, after six months. After six months. So it's not a walk in the park. Building a culture is something, look, the African tradition, every nation has its own culture. It's taken hundreds of years. Because, because of the, this word called training. Yeah. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6. And what about, what about Pastor Tom? There are those that resist change in the church. So every time you begin to confront something, get ready for people to leave, right? Yes, yes. So it's not and, a and, and, and that should be one of the objectives. I know it doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to teach you out of the church. <laughs> Is that what you say? No pastor wants to throw away people, my friend. <laughs> There's, a, there's someone who said one time, boldly, he stood and said, I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, he said uh, uh, to the Jews, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, mm -hmm. it is foolishness. He said, by the time I'm done, this is going to change you or chase you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to change you. Oh, so it's going to change you or chase you. Yeah. Now, you're saying something very key, which I think pastors need to be prepared for that. Mm. And I look at Jesus' disciples. Right. They were 12. Judas committed suicide. So he didn't get it. After being with Jesus for three years. That's an apostle. He committed suicide. What I learned from that is, in as much as all you do everything, it's, it's always seems like there are some people you can't just help. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. <laughs> because how do you explain Judas committing suicide after this? It's, it's like he, it just never got through to him. Mm. There's just something he didn't get. Let's put Judas aside. I don't know if you've ever thought of uh, thought to yourself, apart from being listed as a disciple of Jesus, where did Bartholomew go? In third years. Where do, you don't hear anything of those guys. Where, where, it, you know, it seems like Jesus had four disciples. Let, let me tell you what, what they Peter, did. Peter, James, and uh, so, John. Let, let, me, let me tell you what they did. When Jesus told the disciples to go over on the other side, across, on a boat. They remained. And you remember Peter was trying to do some drama, <laughs> walking out of the water, I mean out of the boat, yeah. to walk on the water, because he saw Jesus. These guys, I congratulate the guys who never walked on water, because them they were following the command, let's go on the other side. Yeah. So Peter was actually trying to do <laughs> strange uh, manifestations of his power, a newfound faith. But the other, only the, the, the other 11 disciples did very well to literally keep the word of Christ by staying in the boat. If everybody walked out of that boat, they would not have gone on the other side. So I think let's give credit to Thaddeus, Bartholomew, and the other silent guys because they were always following what Jesus wanted done. But we don't hear of them. That's what I've always wanted. So we the, the evangelists did not record. So, and John says whatever, anyway, that we, we're chasing a rabbit, but that's a good okay. idea. So, it was just a thought. Yeah. We've caught the rabbit. <laughs> so, <laughs> some soup. So now, men of God, I hope you're still here, and women of God. we got to build a culture. So, um, And it was training people. Training people. And it's not a walk in the park. That's where we are. And some will resist change. Right. Yeah, so I think uh, the pastor eventually has to stay with us. Yeah, that are willing, they are open to change, they are open to learn, and invest more of his time mm. and pour himself into those, as opposed to just trying to bring everybody on board and some don't just see it, some don't want to flow with it, because you'll waste a lot of time and you'll end up with like that young man after six months yeah. who will say, I still don't understand what 
is all about. Mm. The third point is we need to have an audit. I think yeah. every pastor after these two, uh, two sessions. sessions needs to do an audit. What are we doing? Right culture, wrong yep. culture. Do an audit. Right culture, wrong culture. Do an audit. Yeah. You need to do an audit because you always you, you must start from you have to start from a place of honest assessment. Yeah. So what because not everything is bad. What are some of the right things that are happening? Mm. What are the wrong things that are happening? And then have an audit. For example, <coughs> just going staying with this um, Acts chapter two. Uh, there are certain things that were going on in the early church. I know when you get to verse 6, they have their own issues, mm. but there were certain good things that were happening, yeah. meaning that this doctrine and the fellowship and the prayers, whatever, had already created a certain culture that was bringing growth. That's why this thing of audit is important. Mm. You, you don't throw the baby and the water. water. And the there are certain things that are right. Mm like prayers. You no, know, there are churches where pastors organizing cashers every Friday. That shouldn't stop. Those are good things. Yeah. The pastor is in the word. Those things must be safeguarded. But then now these other little foxes eh, that are spoiling yeah. is what this these are sharing should help to open the eyes so that they are addressed. Yeah. In the early church one, they had uh, uh, in verse thirty two I know you've seen this scripture before. Mm -hmm. It says, um, uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. The Bible says like this, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Right. Imagine pastoring people, leading people that have one heart and one yes. soul. So, after, the, after you do an audit, you need to go to the fourth point, which is, I told you four things. You must picture what your end result should be like. Mm. You must have a vision of what you're trying to build, what you're trying to create. At the end, what kind of a church do we... So united, yeah. one heart, one soul. Can you imagine, one heart, one soul. And you know what, Pastor Tom? Mm. As we're trying to help our viewers and our listeners on building this culture, we got to almost wind down. Can you summarize what you're saying? Because we have two, three, four minutes. Yeah. Uh, not actually two, three, four. We almost come into a close. Can you imagine? Uh, we yeah. almost probably yeah. call for session three. So the past must build a culture, and we've gone through those four things. Summarize those four things quickly. Yeah. One. We say, of course, we teach. You have to teach. The four and the, things. And the things that you have to teach, yeah. honor, yes. commitment, sacrifice, and excellence. Good. And then, you and then we say number two, there is not going to be a walk in the park. This thing is it tough. It is training. You have yeah. to retrain people. People are coming to you with different yeah. minds. You have to retrain. Mm -hmm. There will be some resistance, but stay with it. Yeah. And then uh, you must also... Uh, Audit. Have, audit yeah. where are you now mm -hmm. don't 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 throw everything and say now and now i'm going tomorrow and i'm going to change everything in this church yeah. no there's some good things you're doing strengthen those praise the lord there's some things that now need build change don't don't touch anything that is working right and then the fourth thing eventually if we are to ask you mm. Where do you want to take that congregation? What kind of a people? And I cannot think of a more precise scripture than Acts 4.32. Ending up with people of one heart. One heart. And one soul. Look at that camera. And give your parting shots to the pastor. We've been talking about building culture for growth. Talk to a man. God's about will. God's will. 30 seconds. Yeah, God's will is for us to grow. And the Bible says in the book of Job that uh, though your beginning be small, let yet your latter end shall greatly increase. That's what's the heart of God and that should be our heart because increase means more people coming to know Jesus and growing in him and being his disciples and manifesting Christ likeness in this earth. 
which is actually what it means to be the salt and the earth. This is what I want to encourage every pastor watching. It's possible you can start today and it's possible to end up within your local congregation with people who flow with you, people who have one heart and one soul. And it's going to be easier to affect your environment and your community with the gospel because you, it is in that kind of an environment that the Spirit of God easily moves. Awesome, awesome. What a beautiful parting shot right there. Pastor Tom Ochori, right here. God bless.